So, in this situation, okay, you will have two resonance forms. In this situation, you will have two resonance forms, okay, where you will have, where you will have a negative charge separation, but even though charge separation is frowned upon, okay, even though charge separation is frowned upon, in this particular instance, okay, you will have full locked on both the boron and the nitrogen. And therefore, this would be the major structure. This in fact would be true for boron and oxygen and boron and fluorine. Now with the boron and fluorine one though, you will have this one, okay? And fluorine will not enjoy being fluorine will not enjoy being a positive charge. Okay. So here, even though you have the full octet of electrons, this would be a secondary, a minor product. Okay. And the second question: how do the, do the electronegativities of nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine? affect the importance of the resonance forms in each case, okay? For nitrogen, the major will be the double bond with charge separation, whereas for fluorine, the major will be the single bonds where the boron doesn't have the full octet of electrons. Now, you might ask me, but Matt, we've done only a few examples in class that were a lot simpler than the tutorial. The tutorial or the tutorial standard is much harder than the exam. The tutorials are is done, or the tutorials are done because all tutorials will be like this. Okay, not not to actually see how you're doing in the exam but to prep you for the exam. So that if there is something you have no idea about, you have no clue about, you can ask. Now, I don't have a contact hour, which means that every hour is a contact hour. Just send me a message, send me an email, and we, are, we will be actually, um, we can set up a meeting, either on Zoom or else in person, okay? In person for now, I don't mind meeting you, okay? But we'll just need to see where to meet because university, the library is not a big option, okay? Um, canteen is an option, but normally it's a little bit too crowded, okay? And therefore we'll see. Back in my day, something like this, depending on what it was, we used to go either go in the office or else with someone like some lecturers which I knew really well, and you get you get used to do, you can you can get used to people at some point, maybe a drink over some questions. But this year, those are not really big options. Okay. So possibly it will be a Zoom call. But just send me a message and I'll be able to help you. If you know that some other people have the same problem, for example, I'm gonna mention N and Antonia. They both do not understand why this would be a minor product, okay? And the major would be the single ones, okay? Then you can set up a meeting with the two of you together, okay? Now, but these are harder. So the next one, Propylene, I was really lazy because I didn't want to draw it, okay? Um, this was something that if you look it up, you, it's one of the first molecules that comes up online, okay? And propylene is this structure. 
the video that Anne mentioned is going to be with regards to the naming that I had given you earlier on in the air. Okay, and some other miscellaneous stuff from what we've done. So this is two to two propylene. And here you are asked to write the hybridization scheme for each carbon in the at atom in the molecule. Okay, if the need arises, make a model to help you visualize the shape. What type of orbitals are present in all of the bonds? Would you expect the bonds to be stronger or weaker than ordinary carbon-carbon bonds? Now, normally, when you have single bonds, you have sp3 hybridization, okay? But in this case, this is not possible, okay? This would be too strained as a structure, okay? It would be too strained as a structure. And therefore, in this case, all these carbon atoms would be sp2 hybridized, okay? They would be sp2 hybridized. In fact, in some of them, you will also have sp and p orbitals taking part in bonding, okay? But at phase value, you can write it as sp2 hybridized, okay? And normally we speak about, let me draw this one and this one, okay? The bonding between these two is P because it is perfectly 90 degrees, okay? It's P bond, P bond overlap. These are not the usual carbons. These are not the usual hybridizations. So this was just something to get you to think about what the P or uh, what the hybridizations could be, okay? And if you were to try and look this up online, it's not an easy answer. You will probably not find the answer easily, okay? So you'll have sp2, p, and there are also some sp hybridized, but we'll just ignore them for now. But normally we speak about this carbon over here. And I think even from where I got it, it was about that carbon over there. But this carbon is a P orbital overlap. Okay? Issa. And essentially, we can notice it's sp2 and not sp3 because of the way it's shaped. Yes. Okay. So if you were to actually build the structure, you know that this angle is 120 degrees. Okay? It would, it would be 120 degrees. Okay, so it's something where you would be able to actually note that that structure can't be sp3. Okay, Issa. Issa. Now, draw two or three resonance forms for each of the following species indicate the major forms for each structure. Let's skip that one because that will probably, that will probably actually take a little bit more time. Okay? But I would like to try and draw them all. Halli, Ankalil, Komuri, Konkuftam, Luom. Which is the strongest acid? Nitrous acid with pKa of 3.3 or phosphoric acid with pKa of 1.3. Calculate Ka for both. So to calculate Ka for both, normally it's not difficult. And in fact, here yeah, it's not difficult. Okay, so Ka equals 
10 to the power of minus pk, okay? Now, if you were to do this for both of them, okay? This is 0 0.0. 0, 0, 0.0501 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.0501 okay so here okay the higher the ka the stronger the acid okay and in fact, the lower the pKa, the stronger the acid would be. Okay, so phosphorus acid is going to be the strongest acid of the two. Now, this is something I remember when I was your age, I used to have a bit of a problem with this because I had always gotten used to seeing the, the term Ka. And with Ka, I knew that I could say Ka equals concentration of H plus times A minus over HA. Okay, so I could always be in a position where I could write fictitious numbers and actually see what these numbers will give me. But in your case, once we turn it to pKa, then it's gonna be different, okay? So in fact, the bigger the Ka, the stronger the acid, but it would be the smaller the pKa, the stronger the acid. So when you look at tables now at university, they will always be given as PKs, okay? Something to keep in mind. Now, question six was then, identify each of the following species as either a Lewis acid or a Lewis base and write an equation illustrating a Lewis acid base reaction for each one. Use curved arrows, grooved arrows that exist, okay, to, de to depict electron pair movements. By the way, I didn't ask you, how were the exams? How did you find them? Not bad, though. I mean, inorganic was a really weird one. Um, overall, it was okay. Like, our inorganic was the only one which was like was a really weird paper. Uh, <laughs> Listen, this is a piece of advice. You have three, some of you have more areas of different topics to study. They are all different, inorganic, organic, and physical. They are all distinctly different from each other, okay? Some of you might realize that you are good in one, maybe weak in another. Very few students are brilliant in all. Now, so if you found inorganic to be a little bit tough, next slot of exams, prepare a little bit more for them, okay? But it shouldn't be a big problem, I think, in organic, you, you had symmetry for this one? Uh, um, yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, yes, it's, it's not always... good stuff per se, Tom. It's not good stuff per se. It was more because, firstly, our teacher never we're told recorded. us. We're recorded. Anymore. Nikki, we're recorded. Okay. Oh, no, 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 don't say. Know. Listen, no. Never say anything against teachers. All right. I don't know all of them, but for example, that's why I told you I know definitely relatively well. I'm not saying it, it's just nothing. Bush Hamur. Bush Hamur looks like I'm Far from it. In my, no, no, okay, man, it's just the, pay, the, pay, the structure of the paper itself was, was a bit tech, weird. Like, not, right, not, for not mine, for the, never done a paper. I'm, like, I'm going to try and keep this structure of last year. 
but what I always do, because I know that I might change a few, a few things to make it more my paper. I will give you a sample paper beforehand. Okay, so you would be accustomed, you get used to how I want to assess you. But next time you might want to work a little bit more on the areas where you didn't do that brilliant, okay? So Lewis acids or Lewis bases. CN minus, it is a Lewis base. Okay, it is a Lewis base, whereas CH3OH can be both a base and an acid. It's a dam, I mean, it's a little bit of equation, so neck. But these, half not drop, you end up being seeing them as either one or the other. But in most cases, they can be both. CH3OH, the oxygen can donate a pair of electrons, therefore it is basic, but the oxygen can always also lose the hydrogen, making it acidic. CH32, CH plus, it's an acid. MgBr2, okay, it is an acid. Now here, Magnesium bromide, it's acidic because magnesium bromide, it is partially covalent, which means that it has empty orbitals, okay? It only has four electrons in its outer shell. It's not as acidic as beryllium bromide or beryllium chloride, but it is quite acidic. CH3BH2 is a fully acidic structure and CH3S minus, it's fully basic, okay? And when I give you the answers, then you can see that you are going to have, then you can see that you are going to have a situation where you are going, you can try and see whether you've understood, them, understood this or not. In my opinion, these are not gonna be the most important aspects, but later on, in around a month's time, we need to start analyzing what is a strong acid, what is a strong base, okay? But we'll be doing that later on. Now, question five. Question five, let's see if it's open or not. I tend to use this program, okay? This program is ACD Chem Sketch, and you might tell me this is cheating. But if I am if I am unsure about a name, okay? If I am unsure about a name, then I simply go up here, draw the structure, and see what name I get. So let's try and draw something complicated. Okay, so this is something that you would have done this year. So it is, seven, right? This is four, one ethyl heptane. So four, one methyl ethyl heptane. So Sir, I would I'm supposed to be seeing something other than the questions. Yes. This Thank one. you. I won't know because I would have forgotten what I would have put in to share. Sometimes I just do the whiteboard, sometimes I do everything. Issa. Then you get something like this. My name was correct. So when you use 
these type of systems, always be a little bit cautious because there might be more than one, one way how to name it according to UPEC regulations. Okay, so by changing the methyl to chloro, he gave you what I had given you before. Pay attention, okay, that you try and follow the instructions I've given you in the naming system, especially when it will come to your tests, okay? Um, so, or exams. So in this case, now drawing them should always be a bit easier. Four chloro five methyl hexane. So draw six. Okay. Now this is definitely wrong because if you were to draw four chloro five methyl hexane, this should have been three chloro two methyl hexane. Okay, and that's why you had correct. Okay, because some of them were not completely correct. Okay, for the second one, three methyl, three propyl pentane. Okay, this was fine, apart from the fact that you had the commas. Okay, you should not have had the commas. Okay. And once you drew the structure, you realize that you have one, two, three, four, five, six. So this should not have been three methyl dipropyl pentane, but rather this should have been three ethyl, three methyl hexane. Okay, so this was a little bit of a tricky question to see if you actually know how to do the naming. Okay, this was a little bit of a tricky question to see if you could actually do the naming properly. One, 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 trifluoro to methyl propane. There was nothing wrong with the naming. Okay, there was nothing wrong with the naming. And four, three, bromo, butyl, non ain as well. So you could draw an onane. No, there was, because this would be a decane. Okay, again, this would be 10 carbons long, the longest chain. So this would, in reality, should have been Five, sorry. This should have been two bromo, five propyl decane. Okay, again, if you are unsure about the name, go to something like this, draw the structure, and see what name you get. Okay, I loved this exercise because this exercise is not just going to tell you draw these structures, okay? It's easy to draw the structures. This exercise is actually going to be, but do you know what's wrong with them? Okay, and that is what you would need to do at this level. That is the biggest, most important item that you would have. Now, question three, OCN minus. Now, these will give you, or should have given you a bit of a hard time. OCN, you need to put the negative charge somewhere, okay? so. Let's start by putting it 
on the oxygen, okay? And then you would need to satisfy all of the oxygens and all of the nitrogens and all of the carbons bonds. So in this case, this looks like a viable option. Okay, so that, that seems to work. Okay, you have the octet rule being obeyed by the oxygen, by the carbon, by the nitrogen. The octet rule will also be obeyed if you move a bond like that, okay? And you would get O double bond C, double bond N, where the oxygen is now going to be neutral, but the nitrogen is going to have a negative charge, okay? So this would be the extra electron here. Which one do you think will be the major product? The second one? Which is most electronegative, oxygen or nitrogen? Oxygen. So the negative charge should be on the oxygen. Oh, okay, because I was going by octet rule. Both obey the octet rule. Oh, you're right. Okay, never mind. <laughs> okay, now. I'm sorry, I'm so tired today. That's fine, that's fine. I will not be. So I will be doing another five minutes, okay? I will be doing another two of these and we'll stop for today. I know it's been probably a long day for you. For next week, we'll have Thursdays and Fridays. So even for me, I have lectures till eight. I shut down at seven, if not earlier than that, because I have lectures from four to eight sometimes. And as soon as I have nothing to watch on my computer screen, I shut down because I need to, in order to focus for me, I would need to be doing more than one thing. It just, <sighs> lecture, late lectures, I don't like them that much. So the other one was CH2. Okay, and I, did, I, I didn't draw the hydrogens here. So let's draw the hydrogens for cause of the bonds. But here, you can then transfer the electrons. And again, this one is the major product because nitrogen is more electronegative, okay? Because nitrogen is more electronegative, okay? Now, one that is probably hard or the hardest one in here is O3. And we'll, I'll do O3 and then from O3, we will, we will have a break for today, okay? We'll stop. I will send you the answers, and if you have any questions, any queries, just contact me, and we'll go through the answers separately. So oxygen, at least you need to have that. You know that ozone, O3, is oxygen connected to an oxygen connected to an oxygen, okay? So at the end of the day, this is something that you would need to have an idea about. So I would say, try and satisfy this oxygen over here. Okay, and I would go as far and try to satisfy the other oxygen on the other side. So I know that I have two oxygens that are happy and one oxygen that is ultra unhappy, okay? Because the oxygen in the middle, it has two, four, it has 10 electrons. And we know that 10 electrons will simply not 
work. Okay? So this doesn't obey. This does not obey the octet rules. But from this point, from this point, we can start to look at what we can do. Okay? And the first thing I can do is I can try and move a, double, a set of electrons of the double bond to all of the oxygens. And here I will get, let's actually do this. And here I will get this. If I transfer those two electrons from that bond, I will get this, where I will have a negative charge and a positive charge. So we went from something that did not obey the octet rule. Does not obey octet rule to something that will obey the octet rule, okay? Eight electrons, eight electrons, eight electrons. So between these two, this is already the major component, the major resonance form, okay? Now, from this point, then, you can have a full movement of the electron to the other oxygen. Let's say this oxygen was oxygen 18, okay? It was a radio isotope. Okay? So at this point, then you will end up in a situation where you have this structure where the negative charge is on this oxygen and the positive charge remains on the oxygen in the middle. But this will also obey the octet rule. So this is also a major product. And between these two, you will have the same number, okay? They will be equivalent. Issa, you might be, you might be in a position Okay, where you think that at the end of the day, you can draw the localized form. For this, I do not really like the localized forms. For organic chemistry now, the localized forms are a hindrance. Okay, because let's say you have this one over here. Okay, yes, the bonds are neither going to be a full double bond nor a single bond. But at the end of the day, you're going, you're either going to react from the negative charge on the nitrogen or the negative charge on the carbon. And when we're doing mechanisms, or when you are going to be doing mechanisms, because you're not going to be doing these mechanisms with me, okay, you will need to choose which resonance form to use. Sometimes you need to have a negative carbon, sometimes you might need to have a negative nitrogen. So you need to draw both resonance forms to then see which one is going to attack. And the minor product, the minor component, might still be the one that reacts the most because of the products that are formed. But that's something for, an, for another day. From these, I don't think there is anything that is that interesting except for for maybe number seven.
HOCH and H2. So HOCH and H2. So this carbon is going to have an amine. It's going to have a hydroxyl and the hydrogen and the positive charge. In fact, here, you can have a number of items, how to stabilize it. You can either go to root one, or you can go through root two. Both will give viable options. Apologies, I told you it was gonna be the last one, the previous one, this will be truly the last one, okay? So this is if you go through the yellow root, and the other one will take place if you go through the blue root. Okay, and here I would say that at the end of the day, this would be, so blue, this would be the major, and this is the minor. But this would be a combination of all three of them, major and minor, because the negative charge should be on the least electronegative. And the least electronegative here would be the carbon. The minor, the negative charge, the oxygen, definitely does, want, does not want to have a positive charge on it. So definitely at this point, you're gonna have the positive charge either on the carbon and the nitrogen, but this is a very stable structure, okay? If you ever get to this point, this would be a very stable structure. It's also a very stable structure to leave, to lose water as well but that's something else, okay? But this would be a very stable structure. Now, any queries with what we've done today in this tutorial sheet? Because I know that for me, they might look easy, but I know that for you, they, these might look very scary. Uh, why was the structure particularly stable? Mela, Gabriel. So the structure is stable because it can be stabilized by two heteroatoms, one. I mean, the more resonance forms you have normally, the more stable you are. And if those resonance forms are in themselves quite stable, then the stability increases, okay? But at this point, you can form a double bond. So this, that carbon, it might look that both the oxygen and the nitrogen want to take electrons away. Okay, which at that point, it's something where it should be destabilized. But this is stable and that is stable. Therefore, the structure as a, as a whole, okay, OH would be a stable structure. Okay, would be a very stable structure. So it's something that you would need to actually consider Again, for mechanisms. For now, just draw the resonance forms for the major and the minor product. But for mechanisms, it would be great. In reality, something, one second, in reality, something like this would end up losing the water. Okay? Because you'll end up having this structure, you will and then go and protonate the water by losing a hydrogen and you'll form the amine. Okay, but it is a stable structure. Okay, if it were a stable structure, it will revert back to removing the proton, uh, to removing the charge of the proton. Okay, Gabriel. So essentially because of the double bonds and the multiple resonance forms, they stabilize it even though there's a positive charge. Yes. Okay. Listen, there are quite a few structures in nature that have a charge on them. Okay, and they are stable. One of the biggest ones would be if you have three phenyl groups, okay? So something like this, it would immediately lose the hydrogen, okay? It's more stable being positive charge than if it were neutral. 
but these are things that for now you can leave them, okay? And when we come across these, when we're doing reactions, then we'll see. Tayep? Any further questions? Now I know that some of you might be tired, but I'd rather if you have a question you ask, okay? Then no questions, we stop now and then you have the same problems next week. If there are no questions, yes? So for, for stability, first we look at the octet rule and then the electronegativity. And then charge separation. Okay. Okay. If you have an if you follow the octet rule, this will be the major one. The octet rule is always the most important. Okay. So if there are no more questions, okay. If there are no more questions, we're gonna stop this lesson here today. I'll give you 10, 10 minutes leeway. I'll see you all on Friday online, okay? Um, on Friday, it will again be online. And then I will start seeing you from next Thursday. So not this Thursday, next Thursday at university. If for some reason, I don't manage to change the time slot, okay? If for some reason I, don't, I do not manage to change the time slot, I will advise, but I don't see any problems. For this student who has training, please advise. So we will be able to actually figure something out so that for the benefit of your, of your classmates, okay? When we have physical lectures, they'll be hybrid. Yes. Okay. Emma N. The idea is to have you at university. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I do understand if there are some students who prefer to stay home. Listen, after what happened to my father, I do understand if students don't want to come to university. Okay, but for you, it might be better. For you, as, a, as not, not at you as in, but coming at university is normally a bit better. Okay. So I'll see you next. I'll see you on Friday. Take care. Have a good week and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank you, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Simon. Kifinti. Hello, sir. All right, you know. Okay. Mela, how are you? And the shit training the colloc. I swim as in the national and the colium miller basasita. Oh, Thursday it's an important day. I like it a bit of a. Mela. Ira, how are you? Like the problem I had. I do understand the other students' concern. If the harm is the harm, it's an between six, between seven and eight. It's a bit late. He in a lesson can record you. I I will record it, and on Thursday itself, I will upload the recording. Okay. Issa, not if it's certain assignment. The Thursday to Tarah, I you will need to see that recording prior to the Friday lecture. To the Friday lecture. Okay. Here now, Thursday, I call it half nine, which I will upload the lesson. So by six, it should be available. Okay. You can just take one more upload yet, huh? Okay. But here, the rest of the day, like here, at the end of Facebook, I will need to like a link. I'm going to put the light up for Zoom, ah, for VNL. And when I start to like me low, well, as soon as I do the lesson, I upload and send it to you. Okay. 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 Well, you know, Friday before our lecture, I have two hours free, so nilha narah if it's late. Before the lecture, right? Before, yes, yes, before. Yeah, ma. I have more chance on Thursday after the lecture than on Friday morning. No, I have, no, I'm saying just in case because it's it's late. Okay. In my oh, at night I can oh, I'm at the end of Facebook. I can't go and say it. The party like 
مش هي لا شيء ما يقول له بعد اربع ما اراخش منه وي عشان يبعث لك ما يكتبت له مساج يقول له اسمعني اي ثينك ذس از ذا بيست واي اند اف يو هاف اني كويشنز اباوت ذا ليكتشر دونت وري نو تبعث لي اند ويل ديسكاس يس اوكي بس اي ثينك ذس واي بيكوز اف اي تيل ذيم اند اي اندرستاند ذا اي نو اف اي اندرستاند ليسن ات 7 بيكوز سام وان كانت دو ات they're going to ask but why can't they Hello. and if they were to actually go to the faculty office and ask them mm-hmm. they will realize there's no there, there are no real clashes Hello. but don't worry you'll be able to i mean oh yes no, um, no. ismani i had students in your situation it's your situation in the past you you do have other lectures between four and six though no they're all upon latest till four Okay, you were lucky this year then. I was lucky, but even this year they gave us uh, a student support program, so we were able to change lectures or try at least. Yeah, but for example, for chemistry, chemistry uh-huh. at least once per week you have practical still five. Mm-hmm. No, but that's as in, for example, our uh, labs this year, for example, mine is on a Wednesday. Wednesday in the evening I'm free, so it's... It oh, okay, lab. okay, then, then you were lucky. No, no, but lucky. Um, I'm telling it because... Sometimes, for example, I, I'm, I'm going to speak about myself. Sometimes it could be difficult because I'm a part-timer. Mm-hmm. So yes, they would yes, need no, to the lectures depending on what time I'm available. Mm-hmm. But don't worry. If you need anything, just ask and I'll be more than happy to help. Thank But you. I will send you the recordings. Should be fine. Uh-huh. Okay? Yes, no. Enjoy it. Okay? See you, Thank Simon. You. Take care. Thank you. Ciao. Welcome. Bye-bye.